Hi, and welcome to the Ken Parkin Real Estate Podcast, where we talk all things real estate, business related, and really anything happening in your life. If you've got a few minutes, we'd love to have you sit back, relax, and enjoy what we have to offer. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of my podcast. Actually, welcome to the first episode of my podcast. I haven't come up with a name yet, and uh, maybe we can, as a collective group, do that. Um, wanted to the, the main reason why I wanted to start a podcast was I have a lot of colleagues, a lot of friends, a lot of clients, and the topic always comes up, what's happening in the market? What are your thoughts about, and then insert anything to do with real estate or uh, even even uh, home renovations? So I thought, what better way to share my thoughts collectively with everyone and also get feedback than to start a podcast where you can listen to it when you are at the gym, when you're at home, when you're on your way to work, when you're at work, that'll be our little secret. Um, and I really just want to share relevant information to do with real estate, to do with um, home renovations, to do with kind of life in general, uh, combining everything together. So uh, the podcast is going to be found on my website as well as YouTube, and I'm going to probably try and get on Google uh, Google Podcasts. So wanted to uh, – this first podcast is really more going to be just about who I am, what I do, and really how I can bring value to you uh, in any kind of real estate or home renovation uh, need that you may have. So uh, as I said before, if you don't know me, my name is Ken Park and I have been in real estate now pushing 10 years and it's been quite a journey. It's been, it's been something that um, has really been a passion of mine. I've really loved uh, starting, uh, getting into the career, you know, when you start a new career, things can be um, exciting. Things can be challenging. Uh, you can get in, you know, sometimes a little bit over your head or have no clue what you're doing. And I think any entrepreneur that is getting into business experiences all of these things at once, right? Um, so for me, for the for the real estate part of it, before that, I was working at a construction company and just loved doing construction, loved doing what, um, uh, things that made me happy were, were fixing up homes and, and, and commercial spaces and, and seeing a smile on a customer's face. And I really figured out my true passion was like the real estate part of all of that. And so I got into the business uh, about 10 years ago and I've been involved in many different businesses along the last 10 years of my journey, mostly focusing around real estate and uh, in home renovation and construction. So um, it's, it's, been, it's been an amazing journey. I've met some fantastic people. Um, many remain true friends and colleagues today. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've really met some awesome clients. And, and this business is built on your network who you know, more importantly, you know, who you're friends with, who you become, you know, close with, who you share, you know, life's interests and goals and dream with that, that really builds out your network. So if this is your first time and you don't know who I am um, and you have a specific question, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email. My contact details are are going to be below and in the in the contact info of each podcast but sold at kenparkin.com is the email to reach me at and you can uh, you can hit me up there and we can we can go from there so um another part that i'm going to be introducing is um a, a part uh, of the podcast and it, it's probably going to turn into a vlog a video blog is going to be uh, sitting down and just talking with local businesses in the GTA. Um, it's tough out there running a business, but I th I find that if you can uh, connect with the person behind the scenes, you can connect with the employees, you can understand sort of the mantra of the business, um, a 
I mean, every business is, is in business to make money, but we're also here to deliver a true customer experience and provide lots of value above and beyond you know, your purchase. So we're gonna be rolling out a series for um, business owners and, uh, and listeners of the podcast, colleagues and friends to sit down and do a deep dive into uh, local businesses, what they provide, the services, um, and, and uh, the value, the products that they provide, uh, as well as learn about the actual owners. So that's going to be a really cool series, and I'm looking to do one a month. So if you are a small business that uh, you'd love to be highlighted, um, we're going to be putting some paid dollar promotions behind our podcast through Facebook advertising, and we really want to blow up your business. We really want to blow the podcast as well. So um, that, uh, that's what we've got coming out. I wanted to talk briefly about an article that I wrote uh, on my website, uh, which is kenparkin.com forward slash blog. And uh, it was talking about um, a couple of things. One, the luxury real estate market has taken a significant drop. And I didn't really expand on my thoughts as to why it had dropped. But, you know, as we look at the main factors of um, what the government has rolled out in regards to the uh, foreign buyers tax, it kind of is is showing that upper echelon luxury real estate market uh, was primarily dominated in Toronto and in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. Um, by foreign investment. And I think there's a political divide, one, and uh, this podcast for me is never going to turn political, so uh, I, will, I won't go down that road. I don't want to. Uh, I respect everybody's views and opinions. But um, there's, been a, there's been a political divide in, in the sense of should we have a foreign buyer's tax? And is that foreign... Uh, investment is that interest from foreign buyers really messing up or, or affecting our, our real estate market. Some say yes and some say no. And I'm on the fence with it. I really don't know if uh, the higher end luxury real estate market and even those prices getting driven up even more, especially in Toronto, uh, are having a major effect on our on our main real estate market. That's up for debate. Um so that, that's something I, I'm definitely going to dive into a little bit more. But uh, it, it, it has affected homes uh, you know, between a million and two million. And there's a few things that have affected that, not just the foreign buyer uh, tax, but also the interest rates have gone up. You know, Since July of 2017, we've had four rate increases from the Bank of Canada. Four. We're now up to 1.75%. Uh, interest from the Bank of Canada, which you know gets translated into uh, the larger banks, and then they set their own interest rates. But um, you know, the Bank of Canada has come out and said they they expect three more to happen by the end of 2019. The prediction, and this is just a prediction, not by me, but by a few uh, people in the know. You know, they they're saying that the Bank of Canada interest rate is going to be you know closer to two and a half to two point seven five percent, which is going to probably translate into a minimum four and five percent interest rates on the variable end and on the fixed end. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure where those are going to go to, but you know, um, if we use the example, you know, if you have a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage, the current rate is three and a half percent on a twenty year amortization period. The variable rate uh, payments, which you're not locked into a fixed payment, um, they're going to go up $50 after this last uh, basis point uh, hike up to 1.75. By the end of 2019, if we get that an extra 1% hike, it's you know potentially another $200 a month added on to your current mortgage. So if you're considering making a move, if you're um, buying something, if your mortgage is up for renewal, these are some major factors you need to take into consideration today. Uh, you know, as the rates um, come, uh, the, the announcements come from the Bank of Canada, the banks, the major banks are going to act accordingly. 
So definitely, definitely something to take into consideration. My thought on the actual rate increase, I think it's not a bad thing. I think if they stick in between two and 3% from Bank of Canada, I mean, look, we've had free interest rates for a very long time. You know, to me, free money is under 3%. And the variable rate has been under that for a significant period of time. Obviously, it's jumped up and down. But, um, you know, the bank the bank can't lend money out. Bank of Canada lend, can't lend money out for free, right? Um, th there's got to be some sort of interest uh, accumulated on that. And we've had some we've had some really robust uh, economic factors come in. I'm not seeing it, but I'm not an economist, and I'm not paying attention to the the nuts and bolts of it. But I know that we've had a very significant and very good um, uh, you know jobs market. Uh, companies are uh, hiring you know we're seeing some some interesting things come out of the US but some positivity in terms of companies making some economic investments I don't know how that's necessarily translating to companies up here uh, in Canada but we definitely are seeing some you know some advantages of having uh, the interest rates go up a little bit and that tends to happen when the job markets fairly fairly robust as well as I think they the the Bank of Canada sees what's happening in the states and that they're having a, a good market um, and so we kind of to a degree go hand in hand with with the US so bottom line is if you're considering a home purchase under a million dollars you do not have to put 20% down over a million dollars you have to put 20% down and then you're going to have to factor in your your mortgage rate and uh, and a few other factors. And, and I would highly recommend speaking to a mortgage professional. I'm not against mortgage professionals at the banks, um, but an independent mortgage uh, specialist, advisor, agent, broker, whatever you want to call them, uh, where they have kind of access to not just the bias of a major bank, but they can... They can sort of see what's happening throughout the major five and credit unions and those sorts of things. Um, it would definitely be good for you to talk to uh, a mortgage broker as well as a real estate professional and try to come up with a game plan and a strategy. If you're refinancing but you're thinking about making a move, now might be the time. It might be the time to, you know, to sell that larger home and get into something smaller. It might be time to sell that uh, that townhouse that you know is extremely uh, not cheap but on the lower end, and if you can afford to move into something that will appreciate a little bit more, uh, you know now might be the time to do that. So uh, if you're if you're considering making a move, definitely reach out, and I can put you in touch with uh, with my my network and my preferred partners, and and we can uh, we can set you up with. Uh, a game plan and go from there so it's been it's been an interesting um, last few years with the real estate market um, it's been insanely crazy you know prices have gone through the roof and the the, the salaries of, of employees having kept haven't followed suit and, and you're gonna find a lot of negativity in the media um, and 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 there's a realism to that negativity in the sense that uh, housing prices are really expensive but the supply demand aspect you know plays a, a huge factor a lot of things though that I don't see in the media that aren't reported um, you know one thing that that isn't really reported is a majority of homes now are two income homes two income households I don't have the stats sitting right in front of me to give me the 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 household income and in fact I can look that up as I'm talking but um, <clears throat> I, I think they're extremely low when they are advertised uh, when they're when they're talked about so let's take a look here the Canadian average household income let's just see what we find here so uh, ba, 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 ba. in January of 2018, what is the average family household income? 
StatsCan's always about 25 years, you know, behind. But they're saying in 2015, the median income was roughly $70,000. That was the total median income. I think today we're well over $100,000. I think if both people are working, the, the average would be, you know, on the lower end, uh, 40000 per person, 45000 per person. That puts us at $90,000 combined. But I realistically think there's a breadwinner that's probably in the 60 to 80 and maybe even closer to $100,000 on average. And that second person could be that forty to 50000 So I think... You know, it, it's really hard to say because there's different pockets in different areas. It depends on where you're listening from. But, you know, in the greater Toronto area, I would say that the average household income would be in that 150 range. And to qualify for a million dollar mortgage, to qualify, you need 150000 And I'm not going to give an exact number, but in that $150,000 range. So... The numbers aren't outrageous. You're definitely stretching yourself when you when you take on a mortgage like that. Um, but there's a lot of factors at work. There's a lot of factors at work. You know, we have, and I'm going to do a podcast specifically on this. Um, baby boomers are contributing huge to their children and grandchildren's, um, you know, success, their future. Uh, there's a lot of uh, baby boomers and. I, uh, I don't want to give out false stats, but there's a lot of them, a significant amount. I know Brian Buffini um, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, had talked about, uh, you know, 60 some odd percent of baby boomers did not have a mortgage in Canada. Like that's, that's huge. And so a lot of baby boomers are doing reverse mortgages. They want to live where they, where their house is, but you know, they're basically refinancing their house and living off of that, you know, that refinance. Um, there's a lot of things happening, but the general scope and where we're sitting today on October 31st, 2018, I'm very, um, I don't want to say I, I'm pro where we're at right now with everything. I think there are some things we need to be cautious about. If you're considering making investments in real estate, uh, not your home, but you know, an investment property, make sure that you are buying something you can hold on to for five years and the economy can hit the fan and you know you can you're not going to worry about it so there are some factors that need to be you know need to be taken in uh, into consideration but um overall i think the health of the economy is is good i think the health uh, of our real estate market is good the bank of canada has extremely slowed down the growth of the real estate market it was out of control a couple of years ago, you know, 2015, 16, and, and into 17. It was out of control. I mean, prices were going for insane amounts of money that should not have gone for that. And so those people, as long as they don't move, are going to be fine. But if they need to move and get out, they're probably going to end up losing, uh, losing some money depending on, you know, what they bought and where they bought. Where I see the market shifting to, and this is, this is you know, where I get asked a lot, you know, we've got some factors at work here. And, and, and even 10 years ago, I don't think the stats can necessarily reflect on, uh, you know, trends on where we're going. Um, and the reason is, is we haven't been in this situation before. We really, we really haven't been in this situation before. And, and the situation is, is we've got uh, baby boomers that are a significant part of our market, a significant part. We have the Gen Xers in between the, the, the millennials and baby boomers that are, are, are a small chunk, but are there. And, and then we have the millennial uh, uh, population that, you know, they have, for the most part, bought their first home and are either moving up or moving, making a lateral move. Well, if they're moving up, they're buying uh, the baby boomers homes that are larger that they bought a long time ago. So there's a huge influx of, of factors that are happening in our real estate market that, you know, we need to be conscious of as professionals, uh, as consumers, uh, you know, and, and take a look at when you're making a purchase. Um, and I was helping a colleague of mine with his clients uh, while he was out of town, they're, they're, considering buying a uh, 
country property and I wanted to make sure that if they were going to move within the next five years that they're probably going to lose money because country properties in the Burlington area don't appreciate and don't have as many buyers obviously as city properties. So if you're purchasing something, make sure you understand the numbers, you understand the financials, but make sure you understand the demographics. Who's, who's coming in behind you if you need to sell? Who, who's gonna be that next, the next purchaser? And does the market look like for the house that you're buying, does it look like it's trending in the way that, you know, uh, is gonna stay where it is or, or potentially Potentially increase and so I think any home under a million dollars in the city and when I say the city any metropolitan area whether it's Hamilton Burlington Oakville Milton Mississauga uh, North Mississauga Vaughan Toronto hey, go go out more east and come back more west I think if you purchase a home under a million dollars and you know in the right neighborhood if it's 500 700 eight, whatever it is you're gonna make a good purchase. I don't think you're gonna make a bad purchase. Um, and, and obviously that comes up to, you know, your real estate agent, your mortgage professional, your lawyer advising you and making sure, you know, you understand everything. But uh, anything over a million dollars, with the exception of probably Oakville and parts of Toronto, should be purchased with caution. And it doesn't mean it's a bad purchase. Uh, you can buy a $2 million home and it can be a great investment and you could, you know, potentially be sitting on a $3 million home in, in two or three years. So, but what I'm saying is you should purchase any home over a million dollars uh, with a lot more um, caution and, and definitely do your research and understand what you're purchasing um, because there's a lot less people that, are going to be purchasing homes for a million two, a million five, a million seven, you know, two million dollars, and then we'll be under a million dollars. So it just comes down to demographic and affordability. Um, but I, I think in all areas, even though the the market has dropped significantly, and we're talking like forty percent, okay, like a significant amount um, from last year to this year. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people bought homes that were way overpriced, way like extremely overpriced. And so when you're purchasing real estate, you just have to be super cautious and, and go in to the transaction with someone extremely capable to advise you on, on your purchase. Um, so I want to, I want to leave it there. I'm gonna be uh, pumping these out uh, when I can, when I have the time to do so. I'd love to chat real estate. Uh, I'd love to chat home renovation. And I, honestly, I just, I love to chat business and life. And so we're gonna combine all of these uh, into uh, you know one podcast. And uh, some are gonna be specifically for purchasing or selling. So you may not wanna listen to it. You may want to. I'm gonna try to bring on different guests as well. and and we can uh, we can create something kind of cool, something local, you know, within the GTA, something fun, and really just something that you're gonna wanna listen to um, if you're interested in business and real estate and, and anything else like that. So thank you uh, for listening, I really appreciate it. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna ask at the end of every podcast uh, for your business. Uh, if you don't know who I am, kenparkin.com, uh, click on the about section and it explains exactly who I am. Please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, call my office and, uh, and get me to give you a, a phone call. Send me an email. Uh, shoot me a DM on Instagram. Ken Park and Real Estate on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I'm going to do this the first podcast, but then subsequently I'm, I'm just going to talk about, you know, make sure you guys remember who I am. But if you are considering purchasing, you know, in the next 12 months, and this is probably uh, something you, you should take to heart. Uh, the real estate market is becoming a little bit more difficult to navigate. And so if you're considering purchasing in the next 12 months, uh, give me a show. Let's sit down and come up with a game plan that it's no obligation. You, you, you're going to want to work with me, but I'm, you're not obligated you know, ahead of time. Uh, let's meet. Let's have a coffee and let's go over 
what you're thinking and at least get my opinion and in my uh, overview uh, whether you agree or disagree or you, you you take something away that helps you uh, maybe two or three years from now I'm totally I'm totally fine with that um, but let's let's come up with a game plan for you to successfully purchase or sell or sell and purchase you know your next property and um, it's better to have a roadmap to success than try and just you know blindfully go through it and hope you hit your target so on that note i will leave you thank you so much for listening to my podcast we will chat soon